Hey there, gophers. Welcome back to another episode in our Go series. In the last episode, we covered the basics of scheduling jobs with Gocron. Now we're tackling some advanced topics, why you might choose Gocron over GoRoutines, how to use it with jobs executor like Factory, and how to prevent duplicate jobs, especially in distributed systems. Let's get started. Why use Gocron? When we have GoRoutines. GoRoutines are one of Go's most powerful features, allowing you to run functions concurrently with minimal overhead. So, why would we need Gocron when GoRoutines exist? GoRoutines are excellent for concurrent execution, but they don't provide the built-in scheduling features that Gocron offers. For example, if you want to execute a task at a specific time or repeatedly at regular intervals, you'd need to manually manage timers, sleep durations, and error handling. Gocron abstracts away the complexity of managing these schedules. It provides a clear, declarative syntax for defining when tasks should run, logging, and job management out of the box. This becomes especially important in distributed systems, where tasks need to be managed across multiple instances without risking conflicts or missed executions. Ideally, you would not want to run the long-running processes in a GoRoutine or Gocron. In a distributed environment, it is always advisable to add the job in the queue and let the workers take care of it in the background. We will cover this later in this episode. For now, let's look at this code. In this Go code, we're demonstrating how to run a task at a specific time using a GoRoutine, which I think is inefficient. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Here, in the main function, we specify the time when we want our task to run. In this case, it's set to 5 seconds from the current time. Then, we create a channel called Done to Signal when the task is completed. We start a Go routine with this function. This function will wait until the specified time and then execute the task. Here, the code waits using after function, combined with until function to pause execution until the specified time. Once the time is reached, it logs that the task is running and then logs when the task is completed. After the task is done, the function sends a signal through the done channel to notify the main function. Finally, the main function waits for the signal from the channel before exiting, ensuring that the task is fully completed. Now this is a simple one-time task. What if you want to run something at regular intervals, daily or weekly? In the previous episode, we explained how easy it is to create such tasks with Gocron. We can create different kinds of jobs like periodic jobs, cron jobs, daily jobs, jobs with random duration, etc. Gocron makes scheduling these tasks much easier than maintaining Go routines. In a distributed environment, packages like Gocron come in handy. In such cases, the scheduled task should not run in the scheduler context. It is advised to just add the job to the job queue. This offloads the job to the background servers. Let's see how this works with Factory. We covered it in episode 42. Factory is a powerful background job processing system, often used in distributed systems to handle tasks asynchronously. Integrating Gocron with Factory allows you to schedule jobs that are then processed by factory workers. Here's how you can integrate the two. First, you schedule a job with Gocron as usual. Instead of executing the job immediately, you enqueue it into Factory. Here's a simple example of scheduling a job with Gocron and enqueuing it to Factory. Here we add a new job, which is a cron job that is set to run every day at 10 a.m. In the jobs task function, we create a new factory client. Then, we handle the error. Here, we create a new job called report. It sends the report to this email ID. Next, we specify the queue. At last, we push the job to the queue. On error, we print this.
We can add more jobs like this easily with Gocron. This setup allows you to keep your application instances stateless while leveraging Factory's distributed job processing capabilities. Now let's talk about preventing duplicate jobs, which is a crucial concern in distributed systems. In a multi-node setup, you may have multiple instances of worker machines that run the jobs. Without coordination, this could lead to duplicate job executions. One common approach to prevent duplicates is to use a distributed lock, such as Redis. We discussed this in Episode 8. Before executing a scheduled job, we can check if a lock exists. If not, it acquires the lock and proceeds. If the lock is already held by another instance, the job is skipped. To recap, Gocron offers powerful scheduling capabilities that complement Go's Go routines, especially in distributed systems. By integrating it with tools like Factory and using strategies to prevent duplicate jobs, you can build reliable, scalable applications. If you found this episode helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Go content. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy coding!